Craft is one of the most interesting note-taking and project management apps on the App Store. The fine folks over at Craft reached out and wanted to do a sponsorship with me. And in talking with them, we decided, well, instead of just me doing like a little ad spot and like trying to convince you to download the app, how about I make a video showing you how I'm using the app currently? Um, I've switched back to using Craft as like a note-taking and project management app, and we'll get into how I'm using it, but the short version is it's become the core of my workflow. This video is sponsored by Craft, so let me show you how I'm using it. Like I mentioned at the top of the video, Craft is a note-taking app, but I've also been using it for project management stuff as well. Basically, my whole life lives in Craft right now. I've also been using the new daily notes feature as kind of like a scratch pad to put things as I'm like working throughout my day, as kind of a place to just quickly dump things, but we'll get into more of that in just a bit. Back when Craft launched, I did a couple of videos on the app, and I still think those are really good starting points. The core of Craft hasn't changed. Like the, the core of what's in those videos is, is still relevant, so I'll link to those in the description below because I think they are good starting points. But Craft has evolved so much further since the time of me publishing those videos. Craft has all the basic stuff you would come to expect from a modern note-taking application. Folders, subfolders, favoriting documents, markdown support, embedded images, and so much more. Craft is built on a block system. Next to your lines of text, you'll see these handles. You can grab these and rearrange the text in your documents. You can also use a cursor or your finger to highlight multiple blocks, then drag and drop multiple blocks wherever you want them to be. When selecting multiple blocks, you'll see a editing menu. This allows you to make changes to the style of text. Things like make a list, task, indenting, blocks of code, and so much more. When selecting multiple blocks, you can group these into a page. This is a big part of Craft and we'll cover this more in just a bit. The other button down here is actions. This is stuff like cut, copy, and paste, but also stuff like export the text to other apps or different formats. One of the superpowers of Craft is its slash command. By typing the forward slash key, this will give you a menu of options. This includes formatting options like bold and italics, changing the font color, headings, and list. Now, a lot of these can be done with Markdown, but it, this is a good alternative if you don't use Markdown. Inside the slash command though, there are so many different options, like embed options. This can be simple stuff like dates or a block for a code. So you can embed stuff like images and files. This is incredibly powerful. I store PDF documents that are associated with my different projects that are in craft. This way I can quickly pull up information like contracts or product guides that are associated with what I'm working on. You can also set images as a header. So if you wanna spice up your notes and make them look fancy, you can pull an image from Unsplash or use your own. This is a nice touch if you're somebody that really likes a good looking notes document. You can also embed drawings. Again, type the slash command and start drawing. I do this with the Apple Pencil and my paper like all the time. It's just another way for me to like kind of sketch out what's going on for a project. If you don't want to use an Apple Pencil and you just have your finger, you can use that as well. Another piece of data you can embed now is tables. This was something that I asked for back in my original craft video. Just type the forward slash and then type table. There are several options here for selecting the table size. Whatever option you want, you can just pick it. You can always add more rows and columns after the fact. These tables are fairly basic. They aren't going to be replacing Excel or numbers. But if you are needing to display data in a table format, this is a decent way to do it. I've been using these tables in a few different ways, mostly to store ideas for projects and track sponsorships. This is stuff that I was doing in Airtable before, but it's so much nicer having it in the app I'm using for notes and writing, since Craft is now the core of my project management workflow. The other superpower of Craft is the ability to add content to anything in Craft. In Craft, you can select any block and select Add Content. This turns that block into a page. You can add anything you want to this. It's not limited in any way. You can also type the slash command and type in page. Now this is my preferred way of doing this. This gives you the title for the page and a icon preview of what's in the page. It's just a nice way of displaying that information. The way I do this is I have a top level document. We'll use my video project management document as an example for this. 
This has a few pages in it, one for videos and one for sponsorships. In the video projects page, I keep my active projects, up next, and ideas. These are all pages. This way at any point if I have an idea for that video, I can just add that note in there. This was something that was really missing from my previous system. If I come up with an idea or find an app, I can quickly add it to this page for that video. So the way I think about this is I treat every video as its own individual project. YouTube as a whole isn't a project, each individual video is a project. So in that top level document for that video, I create even more pages, stuff for notes, scripts, PDF documents, sponsor stuff, and anything else. This allows me to keep all of my information for that video organized. If you want something a bit more stylish than pages, you can use cards. Functionally, they are the same as pages, but they look really nice and can display a bit more information on the thumbnail. I use cards over pages when it's something I'm going to share or reference a lot. For example, I've gotten really into custom mechanical keyboards lately. I have a document with all of the keyboards I've built with all the different parts and modifications I've done to them. I use cards to organize each keyboard. When setting up a card, you can pick from different styles to match the document. You can even change the background image. There are preset images, or you can use some from Unsplash or your own images. My plan for this keyboard document is to take custom photos for each keyboard that I've built and use them for the cards and the header. And then also links for all of the parts that I've used, so later on I can publish this document and people can reference it. The third superpower of craft is linking anything and everything in craft together. In any document, you can type the at symbol and type a document name or even a line of text from another document. It will then place a link to that in your current document. If you tap on that, it will take you directly to that linked document or line. At the bottom of that newly linked to page will be a section called links to this page. This is called a backlink and it's automatically placed here. This is so that you can see what pages link together and jump to them if you want. This is extremely powerful when putting together multi-document notes and projects. So for example, I have a document called Dashboard. This is the hub for everything I'm working on and that's happening in my life. I've written documentation for stuff like my apartment and car, that's all linked here. I've got maintenance info, network information, the site and style of my picture frames, stuff I may need, all of that goes into these documents. Then in that dashboard document, I also link to stuff like my yearly themes and workout information. All of these documents I reference a lot and I can jump to them quickly from the dashboard. And that's all my personal info right there in this document, but I also keep business info as well. This includes my top level video projects document, sponsorships, and all of the other projects I'm currently working on. Being able to have a dashboard document is really important. Like I mentioned, through this, you can quickly jump to anything you are working on. I can also get to this document from anywhere using Spotlight. Hit command space and just type in dashboard. But the dashboard isn't the only thing that linking is good for. When I'm writing a big script, I will link to my notes page so I can quickly jump back to it. And since Craft has backlinking, I can quickly jump back and forth between my script and notes page. When adding stuff to Craft, outside of Craft, there is the share sheet extension. Nothing earth shattering about that, but I really appreciate how it adds stuff like links. For what I do, I'm constantly saving links to sites, apps, and just about anything else you can think of. When I add these links to a page, they're saved as a rich link. They pull a thumbnail image, name, and even a description. Super nice. It's not just a plain URL. My past way of saving these required me to fill in all of that information manually. The one thing I would like to see improved about the share sheet integration is how you save items. Right now, you can only save stuff to the top level document. If you have a page within a document, you can't save the link there. The way I typically navigate through Craft is by using the search menu. There are a couple of ways to get to it. Typically, I just hit Command O. Or if you don't have a hardware keyboard attached, you can just pull down at the top of the document. In the search menu, you of course can search for the name of a document, but you can also search for stuff that's within a document as well. This is incredibly powerful and useful to use. You can search through your whole database of any line of text, page, 
anything that's in craft, you can search for it. And the search is incredibly fast. You can also quickly create a new document from search. Just type the name of the document and select the create new option. The craft UI and the keyboard shortcut system is so well thought out. It's incredibly fast to move through the whole UI. No matter how buried you are in something like a document, you can quickly get to the next thing that you need to get to. The keyboard shortcuts are incredibly well thought out and I rarely have to take my hands off the keyboard. Another piece of handy navigation is tabs. Now Craft does support the native multi-window in iPadOS and macOS, but for me I like to have a lot of different notes and documents open and that can just clutter things up. This way I can just have one window open and jump between everything. You can create a new tab by hitting Command T on the keyboard or by selecting the plus button in the top right corner. I honestly wish more apps would have tab support. Something that has been added since I last made a video about craft is daily notes. And to be honest, at first I really wasn't sure what to use these for. I've tried a few different things to see what sticks. And the first thing that jumped out at me and seemed kind of obvious is journaling. This is a place to just write down what's going on, what I'm working on, what tasks I need to accomplish, what's going on in my life, what things are happening around me. It's just kind of a nice place to work out any problems and reflect. The other thing I use it for is to-dos. I have a system I'm working on, and I'll, and I'll talk more about that in a bit when we uh, get a little later on in the video, but for now I've just been putting some small ideas in here for things that I would like to work out. The third thing I use daily notes for is a scratch pad, especially on the iPhone. If I want to quickly write something down and just get it out of my head, this is the best place to do this. I do this with a lot of ideas. I want to capture them so I don't forget about them. This is the quickest way to do that in craft. I usually go through my daily notes at the end of the day to make sure any tasks I wrote down or ideas I captured are properly taken care of. The final thing isn't really the daily notes, but the calendar section. In this area, you can sync your calendar events. Whenever I have a meeting, I just click on the event and select Create Event Note. This is so handy. It auto-fills all the meeting data, and I can write whatever related notes I need to. Templates are another newer feature to Craft. You can make your own templates for things you use often, meeting notes, wikis, even journaling. I have one that I use for video descriptions that I use quite a bit. There's not a lot of work that I do that benefits from templates, but I know I'm in the minority here. The people at Craft put together a ton of templates you can access right from the app. I highly suggest going through these. There's templates related to HR work, recipes, company handbooks, documentation, and a lot more. It's really impressive what they put together. The nice thing about templates is just at any point you can just call up that template and create a new document and you have all the bits and pieces that are the static bits already filled in. When working in Craft, your default space is yours, but you can create a shared space for you to collaborate with others. Any document in the space will be viewable to anyone that has access to that space. I like this because you don't have to share a document every time you create a new one. When working in these shared documents, you can type the at symbol and mention someone. This will send them a notification. You can also use this for assigning different parts of a project to different people. You can also share individual documents from your private workspace. These are published with a link. You can send them to anyone with an internet connection. You can also turn on password protection in case you are sharing some sensitive information. Keep in mind these are being shared online and you can go as far as enabling search indexing so don't publish anything you don't want to get out. If you're somebody that has your own custom domain you can use that for sharing. Where I see this as a benefit is if you're a company that wants to keep your branding and doesn't want to use Crafts Domain, this is an excellent way to do this. When you share a document, you can set it up so that people that are viewing it can comment on it. This is super handy if you want feedback on something you're working on. You can also write comments on your personal unshared documents. I use this for links and stuff that I've shared to a craft document. For example, I have a document called Apps to Check Out, and I add comments for what platforms these apps are on. So if it's stuff like a Mac-only app. Comments are great because it's usually like little bits of information that's not something that necessarily needs its own page, but it's still important information nonetheless. 
Another thing that I really appreciate about Kraft is they care about your data being yours. So what I mean by that is it's really easy to import notes and text files and all that stuff into Kraft, but it's also incredibly easy to get stuff out of Kraft as well. They aren't like other note taking apps where they're trying to like lock you in, where they make it really easy to import stuff, but not easy to export stuff. They truly believe your data is yours. What they are trying to do though, is give you an excellent experience in using a note taking app or project management app or a writing app, however you want to use craft. They, they want to give you an excellent experience so that you stay as a user. The other thing related to data that I really appreciate is that it's available offline. There are a lot of really modern note taking apps that require an always on internet connection to get to your notes. So that means if you're traveling and you don't have cell service or you don't have good internet, or if you're you know in an airplane that doesn't have Wi-Fi, or hey, your internet goes down, or even worse, their servers go down, you wouldn't be able to access your notes, but with Craft, you're completely able to access your notes offline. And the nice thing is, is I've made changes. I've stress tested this. I've made changes to notes, turned the internet back on and everything synced fine. I didn't have any sync issues. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I think Craft is one of the most interesting note taking project management writing apps on the app store. When Craft first launched, I think it was still trying to figure out what it was. But now it's now it's kind of matured a bit and I think they kind of have a footing they know what it is and they have a good direction that they're heading in. Craft is completely free to download and try out so that means you can put it through its paces see if it's for you without having to subscribe. I'll put links to everything I mentioned including where you can download Craft in the description below so you can go check it out. My thanks to Craft for sponsoring this video. If you liked it hit the thumbs up button subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.